and welcome to Theorycraft. I'm Ben, over here with my co-host Jack. We are two dudes that love to rant, rave and ramble all things sci-fi, comic book or just series gone by. We mostly talk about TVs and movies, but for the moment we want to sort of deep dive into what has been a very random thing to come out of 2021 so far, which is a live-action version of the Powerpuff Girls, a beloved series back in the early 2000s for many children, including myself. It was slightly rebooted back in 2040, maybe 2018, I'm not entirely sure, and... Yeah, it's definitely a series that I didn't expect to be done by the CW, and I have not much in the way of hopes for it, because it's CW, but that's the whole point of today's chat. So, without further ado... Yes, I'm afraid I may be deafening Jack today, because he's got himself a better phone, he's actually able to hear me better now. So by the end of the episode, he'll probably want hearing aids. Yeah, so like guys, if you notice a difference in the picture quality on my end, please do let me know in the comments and let me know how I sound as well compared to old streams. But yes, it's nice to actually have technology that actually works. <laughs> yeah, when it does, we've had... so let's make the most of it. Yeah, we've definitely had some issues along the way, but that's that. So the thing is, the Powerpuff Girls was a very odd cartoon series, to say the least. Yes. It pretty much is a professor randomly one day wants to make his own, t like his own children, so he creates girls out of sugar and spice and all things nice because that was the. <laughs> It was the generic nursery rhyme for what girls were made up of, and as I've grown older, I think they got the recipe mixed up. But in doing this, like <laughs> Professor Utonium does this, and all of a sudden he hits Element X, like he goes bam, and then he creates the Powerpuff Girls, and it was just the whole intro, the whole concept of it was just pow's up. Sort of thing. Like it was so over the top, but it was just our childhood. Like everything back then, it didn't need a health and safety warning label. It was just utter nonsense. But the thing is, there are certain things within the original series looking back at. I am questioning how it's going to work if they do attempt it to a degree for the live action series. Because one of the main things was that they had a mayor who, I don't understand how the hell he was shorter than the girls, but he was this old man. But then his secretary was like this ginormous woman that you never saw the head of, but she was a redhead. And she was called Sarah Bullum. And funnily enough, they've got her in the series as the new mayor. Yeah. So my logic being is obviously the original mayor may have died because he was an old man, which is fair enough. But it's trying to sort of get my head around the whole concept of Toonsville, the place in which the Powerpuff Girls come from, yeah. because this is like the bare minimum of insanity. So let's have a look in terms of... Some of the sort of generic bad guys that they went up against. So I'm going through CBR for my list, and I wanted to pick out this one first of all to try and get your head into whether or not this could actually work. Because from my perspective, I think it would come across a bit too cliche or maybe a bit too bizarre for modern day. Yeah. Roach Coach, do you remember this guy? Oh yeah, like, I remember this guy. But like the look on him, I completely forgot how disgusting he was. Like, if anything, it looks like a very drugged up version of Danny DeVito. Yeah, or just like all the ripoff of the original alien guy from Men in Black. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it pretty much looks like a cartoon version of him. It looks like a complete ripoff. <laughs> 
I mean, I think that's what a lot of this series was to do agree. Like, it was pretty much copy and pasting from other people. Like, you got Boogeyman. Oh, for Christ's sake, I forgot about him as well. Boogeyman uh, looks oddly like an, an elk for some reason. <laughs> I think it's the antlers, but I just read in the description. This Boogeyman is the disco this- version of the classic Boogeyman trope. Being the personification in children while having a pawn shot for seventies music, like as you do, it sounds like, I mean, like it sounds like the locals that run the sh- run the shops down here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't really question that. To be fair, there is a lot of queer folk around this way, but that's just that. And by the way, uh, I mean queer is in the homophobic slur. By the way, <laughs> yeah, but. We also have Seducer, which I think could actually work as a live-action villain, g- given the fact that they're obviously female. It's all female-based. Like you're going to have more in the way of female bad guys to balance things out than it is just the male ones. Yeah, yeah, of course. So I kind of see the concept of Seducer working if they do use her, but I don't know to what extent, because one, it's the CW, so they can't overly sexualized things but then the whole concept of her as a whole was the fact that she was overly sexualized and ensnared professor utonium to try and marry her and it didn't work yes but at the same point it's trying to find the middle ground between being over the top and not enough if that makes sense yeah, but with CW, obviously because of CW, I initially my hopes kind of dropped to this. But yeah, this is it. I mean, L- L- Luzzy, Fuzzy Lump- Lumpkins. L- Luzzy, Fuzzy Fuzz- Lumpkins. Yeah. So, I don't see this coming to the live action purely for the fact that it just, I don't think they have a high enough CGI budget to get away with it. I don't think they have a high enough practical budget from the leaked photos we've seen. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I'll get to those in a moment. But for the moment, we are sort of trying to pick away like some villains, like, say, Princess. I can see that coming a mile the way because she was just basically a spoiled brat that just wanted to be the centre of attention and then the Powerpuff Girls intervened. <laughs> it, like, I, I mean... I forget about a lot of like the original bad guys. There's not an awful what list of bad guys that are worth the hassle. Yeah. But the main concept one, of course, if I can get the screen to behave itself, is Mojo Jojo. So Mojo Jojo is this. Like, he was... Basically, the professor's first experiment, I can't remember the reasoning behind it, but he was he basically boosted the intelligence of said creature and basically wanted to... I don't even remember the reasoning behind it. It was just in a random experiment. And I think he deemed him a failure, so he basically just gave up on him and then created the Powerpuff Girls. And in some bizarre, twisted logic, he just went, ah, Fudge this, like, I've been kicked out and been replaced. I shall be against them forever. Yeah. And the thing is, according to the IMDb list, there is a character that is called Joseph Jojo Mondell Jr. So essentially, it's meant to be the offspring of Mojo Jojo. But he's human as far as I'm aware, unless they have some bizarre CGI trickery. But I'm trying to like grab my head around the fact that he's obviously meant to be a chimpanzee. Yeah. Chimpanzees live about 30 years at the very most, give or take. Uh, I doubt that highly, as they have like kind of the same lifespan as we do. There's a bit of iffiness with it, regardless. So, like, trying to understand one, who the hell would be stupid enough if it is his actual offspring genetically to how do I put this politely make merry with a monkey? <laughs> well, like maybe they had a close relationship of some kind. <laughs> of course, but it was it, it would need a hell of a lot of vodka, I think. 
Like, well, <laughs> more than that, maybe we're hypno, so he won't remember. Oh, Christ. I don't mean the monkey, I mean him. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's trying to sort of obviously find some logic behind what they are intending with the character list because there hasn't been a lot added since I came across this article a couple months back. Yeah. We've only got confirmation for, obviously, the Powerpuff Girls, the Professor, Sarah Bullum, Jojo um, Jr., and the narrator. The... I'm quite surprised that they kept with the original concept of the narrator for the series, because obviously it's the CW, they don't do everything down to a T. But the thing that I found even more obscure was the fact that I completely glossed over the idea that it's actually voiced by the original guy, Tom Kenny, who is also the voice of SpongeBob. <laughs> so, I, the, the thing is, this guy's voice pretty much our entire childhood in terms of cartoons but the fact that he's going back a step in a way because he's going back to probably one of his lesser known roles it's still an odd one regardless because i don't know how they would logically do it because like the narration in the original one was like meanwhile at the powerpuff girls house it was one of these weird like news reporter like old school narrator voices that you don't hear anymore no so it, I don't know how he's going to work. Like, unless they like, he's a narrator in terms of like just doing previously on the Powerpuff Girls, and that's about it. Or unless he's going to have the aura of channeling his inner Jonathan Frakes. Like, does anybody remember the show uh, Beyond Belief? I don't remember that one. No. Oh come on! You must remember Star Trek, right? I thing is, I wasn't really much of a Trekkie to no. be honest. No, neither am I. It was just, it was just saying, like, have you ever met a mysterious man, a mysterious man in a shop that suddenly disappeared? And he had like that kind of like that proper narrator voice says, "Good night, I'm Jonathan Frakes." You know, <laughs> it's just honestly, if you watch anything with Jonathan Frakes, it's amazing. Oh God, um, but yeah, so we got. Let's have a look. One, two, three, seven characters only confirmed so far. And that's only because they're obviously the mainstay characters for the moment. So it's a bit of an interesting one in terms of who they got for who. So for Blossom, we have Chloe Bennett, who was the actress that played Sky, a.k.a. Quake in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We also have the actress Dove Cameron, who plays Bubbles, who was also in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and she was also in Disney's Descendants series. And then for someone to play Buttercup, who I've not even heard of before, so I'm assuming this is probably one of her first early roles, Yana Perrault. Never heard of her. Never heard of her in my life, but, I mean, this is a series that's obviously going to try its best as best it can. But then this is where things get a bit more obscure in terms of like changing things up. While I think he is a brilliant actor, I don't know if he can play a dorky professor as well as he can probably be. Donald Fajan, a.k.a. Turk from Scrubs. I mean, let's have a look at some of the set photos, shall we? Uh... So here we go. This is one of the one of few group photos to a degree. So you've got obviously Donald Fage in there. You've got the actress who plays Sarah Bellum, which is Robin Lively. Yeah. And then you get obviously Dove Cameron and Yana Perrault. Yep. I mean, the thing is, for the Powerpuff Girls, they probably got the easiest costumes to date for anything superhero ish to do. Because it wasn't that over the top. It was just a girly dress, knee-high socks, and black shoes. Like It couldn't be any easier if they tried. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely not. I mean, the thing is, Donald does look pretty decent for, like, a dorky guy. But at the same point, I just... I'm not sure. I don't know what it is. It's just, like, I don't see him to be dorky enough to be the professor. No. But... Like I say, there isn't an awful lot in terms of what is going to happen for this series because, well, 
there hasn't been much leaked in these photos other than the fact that you see outside the house, that's all of the girls together. you got, obviously, the camera woman there behind them to keep an eye on them. And, obviously, you got Chloe Bennett there on a harness. I do like the fact that they use the, like, dress belt as a way to disguise them with the harness to make them fly, if that makes sense. Yeah. But, again... This is the CW. They don't have the greatest CGI budget compared to, say, a film company. So I think they will limit to a degree in terms of how closely you watch them fly. Because when you watch something like, say, Supergirl, you very, very rarely watch her fly properly. Like, it'll be like a speck this big of a blurred person go, and then plump onto the ground. And that's about it. But the other thing as well is, at least with the original series, when the girls flew in the air, they did like a Tron kind of thing where they had light going behind them. They went, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. it was like laser beam sound effects at the same time as them flying. <laughs> so I'm kind of curious whether or not how close they're trying to make this adaptation, if at all. Because obviously budget doesn't mean that they're going to get everywhere right no i mean like i say there is a lot of this that is just pure speculation because we have no actual clue as to what's going on but i don't know whether or not it will even get more than say a few like 10 episodes considering most of the villains were very random, obscure things that would need a lot of CGI to make it work. Yeah, well, to be honest, if it does like, end up falling on its ass, I don't think for this uh, for that young actress, I can't remember her name, like the one who's like, she hasn't got many roles according to IMDb. What, uh, Dove Cameron or Yana Perrault? Uh, Yana Perrault, I think. Yeah, so I looking do, on, if the series does die on its ass, like then it's not going to be much of a tragic loss. It's only very early on. Well, this is it. I mean, for the most part, they've all been listed to be in one episode at least. But yeah. at the same point, it's how many episodes are they hoping to get? Because they haven't updated this for about a month, which means that either filming's come down to a halt or they're just trying to keep things as hush hush as possible. Yeah, but mind you, I don't. To be honest, it's just even like Powerpuff Girls. I remember a lot of series when I was younger. I barely remember it at all. I can't even remember watching it, to be honest. I only remember a little bit of it because it was very rare that I had Cartoon Network growing up. But it's one of those things where we were speculating a while back of what cartoon shows we'd love to see as a live action. But I think Powerpuff Girls was like the last one on our list. Yeah. Because it wasn't really something overly important to us. But again, this is just what we do here. It's our opinions, whether or not anyone agrees with us. But at the end of the day, it's a series that I don't know how well it's going to work, but we hope it works nonetheless. It's just a wait and see, like, kind of, it's just a waiting game, and we'll see. Definitely. But. It's a bit short and sweet this week's episode because there's so little we could go on. I was hoping for more to go over this week, but unfortunately, there seems to be barely any news on it. So I don't know if CW's given up or what. <laughs> well, for all we know, CW probably just went ass on it. We'll just keep on making more rubbish that we usually pump out that seems to be no different to the rest. But oh, hey-ho. Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty much wrapped up this short and sweet episode for this week what's going to be your topic for next week dude well the next one we have a whole list of things to get through from marvel to dc we've got a whole bloody list of them but obviously we're gonna have to go through one by one but i really want to get into the concept of talking about uh, one of my favorite stories and this one that me and Ben have spoken about a lot since we got a few films coming, since we got a few uh, series and so on coming out, such as uh, Blade, which is still in the works at the minute, which will be uh, hopefully coming out very soon. Obviously, we got Morbius, but that was put on hold because of COVID. Um, but we got Morbius coming. But 
then it does introduce a whole new variables and a whole new array of characters, such as Craven the Hunter, maybe Punisher, not sure, um, but also introduces a whole new story of the human spider. Basically, in very brief, Spider-Man, basically, he's fed up with being Spider-Man, he tries to end up curing himself and ends up becoming a massive human spider. So that's kind of the story which we want to get into and see how it can be done maybe involving the Sinister Six and so on, but seeing how we can maybe shoehorn it into a film or into a TV series. Okay, Derek, so there we go, folks. That's next week. We are ranting and raving for all things Spider-Man to a degree. So, thanks for joining us. All of our links are down below. And again, stay home, stay safe, and we'll see you all soon. Laters.